So uh, up to now, we have uh, we started from the just to make a summary of what we have done. We started from the distribution part. which we had uh, uh, many rows for each uh, measurement of the ETH. From this one, we computed the experimental value gram uh, with all the dates. Then with the notebook, we made uh, a mean of this file. So we add the exp var underscore pechip total which we had just one one day and with, with this file we calibrate uh, the theoretical diagram on this data okay so after we computed uh, run the simulation uh, uh, three at the at the end of the output uh, we have the root mean square error this line uh, the first uh, value is the root mean square error between the calculated on the experimental and theoretical diagram and then uh, we have the parameter the optimal parameter so the range the naked and the seed so now uh, what we have to do is uh, to copy uh, this uh, this value in a CSV file uh, this, this CSV file, uh, you have an example of this CSV file in your output folder. Uh, so this is, uh, for example, we use a, I use a <coughs> linear model. So in my output folder, I have uh, a file named uh, ps underscore uh, param total underscore linear precip. If I open it, uh, I see that I have uh, the first column is the start date, then I have the end date, a, a column for the range, nugget, and C. Yeah, exactly. So the idea is that for each period of calibration, we create uh, a new line and we set the start date of the period, the end date of the period, and then we copy the optimal parameter from the, to the console. Now with this parameter we are going to use a, a notebook that reads this file and create a time series uh, and for each data we have the optimal parameter to use in the quiz. So for example if I, um, in this case I use a total uh, average of the experimental variogram but if I want to use a seasonal average what I have to change is just, uh, of course, uh, here in the period, uh, instead of total, I use a seasonal. And then if I open the uh, seasonal experimental variogram, I see that I have different uh, lines with different dates. So, for example, I have to enter the first date to calibrate the first, uh, the first line of the experimental variogram. Uh, I run the simulation, at the end, uh, I go at the end of this file, I open my um, <coughs> param, ps param file, 
I entered the first date, so the 15th of December. The end date should be the 2014 March, not the 15th, but the 14th, and the hour is the 23. And I copy the parameters, the optimal parameters I get from the, the simulation. Then uh, I go back to the OMS console. I enter the new date, so the uh, 2014 uh, March 15, that is the start date of the new interval. I run, uh, uh, I change here the the date period, so I don't overwrite the theoretical variogram output, but I, have, uh, I can have all the theoretical variables for each period. So I copy the date. I run the simulation. And uh, in my PS param file, I add a new line, which I set the first date. The start date of the period, so 2014, March 15. The end date is the 14th of June. And then I just copy the, the parameter that I get from the Zoom. And I do this for all the period I decide to, to use. Once I have finished to prepare the, this file, I go into Python Lab and I open the notebook number four. So with this notebook, I just read the PS file that we have just created. And uh, I create uh, a new uh, file with the entire time series, and for each date, uh, I have the optimal set of parameters for bridging. So the input file is, uh, for example, ps param total, but you can do with uh, the seasonal ones, uh, you have completed it. Uh, I use a linear model, so uh, here in the name I have linear, and the variable is uh, always spreadsheet. And the output file is uh, grid param total linear spreadsheet. And if you open from uh, the editor text, You see that we have uh, the time series. The first uh, column uh, is uh, the, the nugget. The second column is uh, the seal. And the third uh, is the range. And uh, here, for each date of our period, we have the optimal parameter for of the region. And this is the input file for the cleaning simulation. Any questions? Now uh, the problem is that we have calibrated the optimal parameter to approximate the experimental variogram with the theoretical variogram, but now the question is uh, to understand how good is this, uh, how good is the, interpo the resulting interpolation. So we use uh, the Livo and out technique. So we perform a, interp a spatial interpolation of our, our variable. In the using as a interpolation point uh, the metro station, so we can compare the interpolated value values against the measured value, and from this one we can understand how good is our uh, interpolation. So to do this, uh, uh, we have uh, another sim file. 
that is uh, the scene file number four, the cleaning leave one out. So here we can define the start and end date of our simulation. We select the theoretical biogram just uh, to define the input file. As well, the variable and period are two variables used to define, to create the input file name. We have a reader for the data, measured data, so for our precipitation.csv file. A reader for the optimal, uh, for the parameters of the bridging that we have just created with the notebook. A reader for the shape file of the station. A reader for the shape file containing the interpolation point. Then we have the creasing component, and the, at the end, uh, the writer of the interpolated values. So, if we go in the parameter section, the input file name for the reader data is uh, the precipitation CSV file. Uh, the reader of the param. <coughs> input file name is uh, the file we have just created, so pig param, and then you see that we use the variable period, semi variogram type and variable to create the input file name. Uh, the shape file of the station is a meteor station basilicata.shape file. Uh, the ID, uh, the name of the field of this shape file is uh, always ID. Then uh, here we have uh, the semi variogram type that receives as input the variable uh, semi variogram type we defined at the beginning of the sim file. And at the end we have the output file name where L00 stands for leaving one out. <coughs> So here uh, you see that I have uh, commented uh, these three lines because uh, now the parameter of the cleaging are read from uh, a CSV file. Otherwise, if you don't want, uh, you can enter manually a single value for each, uh, uh, for each of these uh, variables. But of course, at the end, you don't uh, get probably the entire uh, time series for your period. Because uh, if you have just one period uh, of calibration, you can also enter manually the values. But uh, if you have more than one period, for each period you have to, perform, to run this SIM file uh, many times as your period. And for each period, you have to enter manually the values. But the advantage of using a pattern file is that you create a time series with the optimal parameters and you read this one. So you can run this simulation, and I think uh, it, it will take uh, maybe 30 minutes, so we can have a lunch break, if you don't have any questions. So you said, now we are leaving each of the CCP stations one time. Yeah, I'm, I'm calculating yeah. there or whatever. No, we just uh, at each uh, time we interpolate the measured value in one of the stations. Okay. Compare it with the observation. We get from this sim file we just get the time series with the interpolated data, and then with a notebook we can uh, analyze the. Any other questions?